Uh, your red light is on. So this is brought to you by Coca-Cola. If you want to sponsor me, you know, you know where I am, call me. <laughs> Sorry. I like it. I should put that down there. Yeah. Good on you if you get it. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, Chris. Hello. How are you? I'm um, lovely. I would like to introduce to you Chris, who is the owner of, or well, joint owner, joint owner uh, of Just Fish and Chips, which I would suggest sells the best fish and chips in Victor Harbour. Thank you very much. No dramas. We're not going to complain. No. <laughs> Hello, Chris. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. We've had a bit of a history between you and I. Let's throw this one out here now. Yep. We met... Uh, you While you were the... learning how to do archery. I was learning to do archery. That's right. And I started crossbow and... You... And then you got better than me. Yeah. And... But it has... I'm sorry yeah. about that. And then you <laughs> sold the bow and bought a really good one. I did. But different. Yeah. And I've had no chance to use it yet. Oh. A whole 20 arrows, I believe. And that's because we've got all of this <clears throat> stuff going on. Yes. <clears throat> and we won't mention that too much. Um, now, let's, let's start off with where we're at at the moment. You are the joint owner of Just for Chips. Tell me about what you've got going on here, and then we'll go back into history and okay. find out how you got from where you were to now. Where we are. Right, this is Just, JF, uh, Just Fish and Chips, or JFNC, as it is more popularly known. Popular, whatever. Um, my partner Tracy Bettens and I bought this about three years ago um, as a, um, a building that was run by management rather than an owner operator and we thought an owner operator would be better and we've come in and um, made lots of changes and grown the business over the last three years and are still doing quite well even through the virus. That's awesome. Um, and, and you also do lots of specialities too. Yes, um, when we came here, we tried, obviously bought the building or were thinking of buying it. We came in and ate here on a regular basis and we tried various things and we went, that needs to change, that needs to change. And um, when we came in, we started making our own hamburgers here. They're homemade now. We make them out the back. We buy in restaurant quality mince meat, herbs and spices, the Tracy's secret recipe there and um, make our own patties. And then we started making our own gyros meats. Um, not to the standard of the Euros shops in the city with their um, special cutting tools and things like that, but very similar process. We buy in whole legs of lamb, bone them, and um, marinate them over 24, 48 hours, and then um, cook them up, and then slice them up and get them ready for individual sales. Yeah. Um, and we think that is a very big part of why the business has improved. Um, on average, we sell about 50 hamburgers a day, which is substantial in a small um, fish and chip shop in the country town. Uh, probably 30 euros. Lots of hot dogs. Um, I believe we're the only place now in Victor Harbour you can buy hot dogs. Yeah, right. So um, don't quote me on that. You know, it's like, that's what I've been told. Um, and you also do gluten-free, which is a cool Gluten-free is a big, big part of it now. It's become very popular. We're listed on the celiac side of Australia. Yeah as well as many other celiac sites. Um, basically, in the menu you see behind us, if it can be seen, uh, it's about 80% of the menus now available in gluten-free. Yeah. Um, things that we can't do are sort of corn jacks, uh, chico rolls, dim sims, things that come in with a pastry case. Gotcha. So they're pre-prepared rather yeah, than... Yeah, pre-prepared and we buy them in. And they're, they're very popular, but you can't have them gluten-free. Yeah. We are investigating dim sims because they're available gluten-free in Victoria, but substantial amounts are bought to bring them into the state. Yeah. So we're looking at one of our local suppliers to try and get them some for us, but yeah. we're working on those things. Um, I believe that last time we shared our menu on our Facebook page, it was shared 8,000 times. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we said. It was wow. And uh, a good percentage of that was um, gluten-free people, it went as far as Queensland. Yeah. We had a Queensland group phone us up and they were coming to South Australia on holiday, this is pre-COVID, yeah. and um, they made a point of coming to Victor Harbour so eat here. Wow. From Queensland, we were really impressed with that. That is really <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Um, they uh, came back several days in a row apparently. Yeah. Mm. Didn't wow. tell us who they were, they just kept back, coming back and they left us uh, a comment in our comment board. Yeah. 
best chips in SA apparently. Wow. I do have one up there from somebody saying best chips in the universe. I'm not sure how that came about, but that again was another gluten-free person. But you'll take it though, won't you? I'll take it, yeah. yeah. The gluten-free people have a, a very hard time finding gluten-free yeah. anywhere in real terms, and especially at the costs. We try not to charge. For a while there, we were charging nothing extra, but because of the process of making gluten-free flours, batters, and things like that, um, we had to put the price up a little bit, but nowhere near what the supermarkets are doing. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously, you know, I mean, it's identifying those niches or niches. If you, anyone's listening from America, yep, it's niche. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but obviously, identify those niches within the like the industry of fish and chips has got you quite famous. I mean, that's yeah. Really what uh, saying, it, so. It's it's brought in a lot of people, and because we're basically the only place in Victor Harbour that can supply that amount of gluten-free and it's it's a lot to do with the size of the shop like a lot of shops we've got four of the biggest fries you can get you can't get anything bigger yeah. and two of them are dedicated to gluten-free most fish and chip shops haven't got the room for that and then we've got two very large grills most fish and chip shop have got one mm. and one grill is dedicated to gluten-free yeah we've got different batter stations different tools different utensils everything yeah. Um, very aware of it. The staff are very aware of it. We've got a couple that like, are gluten free, so they're right on top of it. If anybody that even looks like making a mistake, yeah. like, nope. <laughs> um, so, it works quite well. So, this is, I mean, let's talk about where you've come from because this is, I would imagine, is quite a big difference coming into a fish and chip shop. This isn't something you've been doing for the last Three. 50 years. Sorry, 10 years because you're not that old. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Um, this isn't something you've been doing your whole life. So, no. I mean, what, where did you start from? Where was, or where did you come from originally? Originally, we're going back that far. Well, no, don't have to go that far. <laughs> before you started the business, what were you doing before you started the business? Um, for nearly ten years prior to this, we were truck drivers. Both the wife and I were both truck drivers um, for Goodman Filter, delivering um, Buttercup Helga's breads across the west of Adelaide. Um, did that for about 10 years, two trucks, a van, 20 staff, because uh, as well as delivering oh. your merchandising, putting the stuff on the shelves, and most people want have more than one job, so we had, although yeah. it sounds, 20 sounds a lot, they're all part-time. Yeah. Or casuals getting one or two shifts a week with us to top up their normal wages, yeah. a, little bit of, a little bit on the side. Yeah. And so that was your your business, mm. or that was DCM Supplies. Tracy and I took this over. It's it was our business, and we had contracts for delivery from Goodman Filters. So it was our business to run the trucks, insurances, staffing, sales. So I'd go around and, and go into the shops and pre-sell products for the following couple of days, following weeks, specials, things like that. So in real real terms, it was our own business, although we had bosses. Yeah. Um, above us, you still have to answer to to make sure you got the sale, if you had the displays and things like that. So it was like a, um, uh, I just got it at the top of my head. Um, you, you bought into the yes the, 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 the franchise. That's what yeah. I was trying to look it, for. It's similar to a franchise, but um, franchises mm-hmm. cost a heck of a lot more money. Um, we set up our, that business on basically um, long service line. Yeah. Yeah. From, okay. Yeah, from our previous company. So, and what were you doing before that then? We both worked for Woolies. Yeah. Um, we were both managers in Woolies. Who isn't? Um, <laughs> it's not hard to get there. Uh, Everyone gets a prize. Yeah. Um, at the time of leaving, I was actually the storeman because I'd stepped down from management. I was in charge of fruit and veg for a while. Uh, too many jobs. Um, yeah. Moved around, jack of all trades because it's a small country town, Woolworths. Um, I tended to like the storeman's job anyway, so mm. you know it was a great job. Um, Tracy was meat unit manager, and we both decided to move on. Um, just because Woolworths is Woolworths, and there was no real reason. They were a good place to work, and when you reflect upon it, when you've got your own business, a place like Woolies is five days a week, two days off, four weeks annual leave. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. You don't have the worry of, I've gone away for five days. Yeah. How's my shop? 
<laughs> Where's my profit? <laughs> How's my business doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, and, and I guess that's, that's, so, so the question is then, why did you jump from Woolies into uh, the truck driving to begin with? I'd been with Woolies way too long. Tracy had been there 10 years and the management in a Woolworth store can change the dynamic of the whole building. Mm. If you have poor management, it doesn't work so well. If you have yeah. good management, it works so well. Um, I think there's a, a mem around there. If you're losing staff, look at your management, yeah. not the staff that's the problem. So we lost um, a very good manager and um, the next manager was nice, but it changed the building. Yeah. And um, we started to look for something different so we could get out. We were looking at franchises and um, my VIP was one of them, lawnmower businesses, things like that. And um, I was driving part-time to supplement my wage with Woolies, just to get that a little bit extra, mm. um, a buttercup truck for one of the other contractors. And he told me there was a round available. So... Tracy and I both went down for an interview. Um, they loved us. Loved the dynamic of Who a couple. Wouldn't? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> loved the dynamic of a couple running a business rather than everybody else was a single male yeah. um, running the businesses where we were a couple so that one could drive, one could be in the shops and they wanted that. They were looking for that more owner, operator in the shops doing the sales than the other existing contractors. Although they all did it, but they're all doing too many hours. Yeah. Way too many hours. So they liked our dynamic and uh, offered us a position. So we left Woolworths and used the superannuation and not superannuation, um, long service leave yep. to establish the business. Okay. Mm. And it wasn't hard because it, there was no buy into the business. It was an interview situation. Yes, you can have the contract, go out and lease yourself some trucks. Yeah. Um, had to do a little bit of negotiation um, from that point of view. It's like, right, this is your what we're expecting you to deliver. Yep. How much are you going to charge me per loaf or per crate or per dolly of bread to deliver these things around the place? So you negotiate your wages, taking into consideration all this. And they were extremely helpful yep. in that process because a lot of people just leave you to it. Okay. They gave us a form and said, these are the things you need to look at. Make sure you have all these covered. Yeah. We want you to succeed. We don't want you to fail. And they were very, very helpful and gave us big hints on what we should be doing. Still ended up negotiating. They knew what they wanted to give us, so we weren't going to get any more. Yeah. You start off big, ended up where they needed us. And we moved on from there. Okay. So, I mean, so to go from driving and contracting, then you go on to fish and chips. Yeah. And that's... <laughs> how, does, like how does truck driving to fish and chips work? You know? Where does that come around? Um, truck driving was good. We both enjoyed it. However, 2 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Seven days a week. You get off Christmas Day. Yeah. Now, you have staff and things like that, but um, basically you've got to be on top of it and thinking about it all the time. Yeah. So we got a bit over the night shift and... Um, at the end of it, we were looking at getting a third round. A third round, we already had two, so I basically controlled the west of Adelaide for Goodman Fielder. And I wanted to control a little bit more, which would have given me more flexibility in drivers and rostering. So um, although we were successful in getting it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down from a negotiation point to where they wanted, so we said no. Yeah. And then we went, no, we're not, this is contract, so every three years you've got to renew your contract, negotiate, and it's like, let's just buy something. And um, my youngest lives here, Tracy's boys live down here, uh, so we went, let's have a look in the area, and this fish and chip shop was up. Mm. So we went, it's cooking fish and chips, it can't be that hard. <laughs> let's do it. Is so, it? It's not that hard, however... Um, We've got a rep for crunchy chips now. Yep. Um, so love crunchy chips. Yeah, you can't have you can't have the non-crunchy chips. No. Um, there was just things that we wanted to improve in it when we came here, mm. but um, it was just something that went. It can't be that hard. 
and it isn't. It isn't that hard. I, what's difficult to learn, and Tracy beat me here because Tracy was here probably 11 months before. So Tracy came down and started running this. I replaced her in the Adelaide business, so we were running both of them. We wanted to make sure this shop was viable and could be improved before we released the other business. Um, and yes, was. And so we, uh, I handed in the other business and both moved into the shop and both started cooking here. What's difficult is battering fish. That's a skill. Really? Yeah. It, it looks really easy. And like when I train people, I show them this is how to do it. I make it look easy too, and it's not. It is quite difficult to get a consistent batter on a piece of fish, surprisingly. But once you get the swing of it, it's easy. And, um, and, and I guess it, like in, in a trade like this, it's consistency that you want so that people go, I really like that. I'll come again. You, you don't want them to come and go, oh, that's soggy, mm. or that was crunchy. That was, you know, like, I Which guess is consistency. Well, Tracy's stuff. done a lot of here. Um, to get that consistency, we yeah. have got recipes for everything now, and they weren't here. Gotcha. So we've made recipes up. So if we're making a batter for Christmas Day, for instance, or day before Christmas and right Christmas Day, um, and we know it's going to be stupid, we'll make a 20 litre batter. And that's a lot of batter. Wow. But we'll make a 20 litre batter, and Tracy's got a recipe for the 20 litres, she's got a recipe for a 10 litre, a 5 litre, and, and all different amounts appropriately. She's got recipes for everything we make now. So the guys can actually make the hamburgers. So mm. we get then the, the mince meat, we add sausage meat to it, help stick together a bit more. And then we've got oregano, onion, a few other herbs and spices. Yeah. Uh, again, recipe on the board down to the gram. So yeah. we've done all those things. So we get the consistency. Um, when we're training people on putting a hamburger together, we get them to do it the same way. Um, there's still two ways of doing it. There's mine and Tracy's. And we both, <laughs> we both debate who's right and who's wrong. And of course you're wrong. I'm not going to win that, but I'll carry on doing it my way. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's down to that and to put them together right. I mean, when we came here, we could tell who made a burger by how it was put together. Yeah. Now you can't, because it's always the same. Ah, the only thing okay. that's different now is where the sauce goes. Yeah. I'll put the sauce on top of the lettuce and tomato. Tracy will put it on top of the meat. Right. Only difference. And of course, the onions have to go underneath the sausage. Got to get these things right. Um, yeah. Unless it's, it's not a Bunnings, in which case it goes on top. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> strange. Um, our hot dogs always have the onion on the bottom, though. Ah. When we have a hot dog with a lot, we always have onion on the bottom and sausage. Gotcha. So you were setting the trend before Bunnings had decided to do that. Yeah. We had the trend beforehand. Of course. Same as washing your hands after you've served a customer. That was a trend we did before COVID. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So take the money, wash your hands, cook the food. Trendy. Yeah. Yeah, but apparently it was had to be done after COVID started. And we've been doing it a long time. And you do have to question, <laughs> don't you? Do, do people need to be told these things? But yes, the answer was they do. Yeah, wash your hands. Do. It's not that hard. So I'm just going to quickly reset this camera. Go. Turn it off and on again because I have no idea what the time is because my phone's going flat. And then what I want to know is... This charger. What... You've obviously built up to being here and, and you're not a spring chicken. No offence. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I guess the first question that's coming to mind is what sort of advice have you got to anybody coming in and wanting, wanting to start their own business? My other question is what's, like, your success? How, how have you been successful doing what you're doing? To go from working with someone to running your own, like, having your own contract to then having your own business what's the success of, or how, how do you feel you've been successful? I'm going to reset this. On it. I'll set it going again anyway. Yeah, that's it's, cool. it's a nuisance, but I, what I'll, do, I'll, I'll put a cutscene or something in there. Have some Ewoks going past or something, you know. <laughs> no, I want a Tyrannosaurus Rex for when you came off your bike. Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex? <laughs> I can do that. He made, that he made you come off your bike. So. Yeah, that's right. So... What is it that, um, so advice, what, what advice have you got for somebody who's coming in to, to, to actually start have a, a business? Have a go. It's it, seriously, it's the scariest part for us, not so much coming into the fish and chips, because we've already run a business and we were running it successfully, so that wasn't a, 
a problem for us. We knew that we could do it. Mm. And that is the part, the biggest part of stepping out of Woolworths, full-time jobs, two days a week off. Security. Holidays, security. We lived around the corner. Yep. <laughs> so everything was easy. Yep. You know, you could even go shopping before you go home. To step out of that with the risk of failing, I think was the toughest thing that we had to do. And also, Trace and I as partners are very rarely apart. Okay, yeah. Very rarely apart. Having our own jobs was another thing. So Tracy does the business finances, I do the purchasing and dealing with the reps. We have our own jobs and set jobs. Okay. So those two things were the biggest challenges for us stepping out. And I think that'd be the biggest challenge for anybody stepping out of a working for somebody to working for yourself. Mm. It's the scare factor is, am I going to make a hash of this or am I going to succeed? Yeah. Uh, we were lucky in that we stepped into Goodman Filter, who don't want you to fail. Yeah. Because if you fail, they've got, in my case, at the time, they had probably 25 supermarkets that wouldn't have got their bread if I'd have said, I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, they would have gone, ah. And they don't have spare drivers and spare people to just suddenly put in a business. So we were lucky in that aspect that they were to help. But that was the, the, the scariness of stepping out and going, I'm gonna try something on my own. Mm. And I think you've got to just try it. You've got to do it. Yeah. Make sure that the area you're moving into is needed and that it's got potential to grow. Mm. And that's what we had with Goodman Filter. It was a needed business. You've got to deliver bread to supermarkets. And I had the potential to grow that business because I could go in and talk to people and go, all right, I think you need more bread than that. And it's a bit light on, you know, you've got this coming up, you've got that coming up, we've got a special on this product, mm. let's get a display on the end. And that's where working in the supermarkets and putting displays and building ends and things like that in the supermarket where you'll see your specials everywhere, gave me and Tracy that leg into this business where we could go, well, we know what needs to be done from the shop point of view. Mm. Now we also know what to do from the other side of it. But advice-wise, give it a go. Yeah. You've got to step out and give it a go. And scare factor, yeah. Put it in in the first place. If you have to work seven days a week for a while, do it. We did. <laughs> was it, was it, I mean, because on, on one way you go, people go, well, it's a scare factor. It's, it's bad, it's, you know, it's terrible. But, but was it exciting too? Oh, like, exciting. Adrenaline rush, yeah, I'd agree with that. It was exciting because we were going, all right, we're doing this. Yeah. Um, what didn't help, and I don't know if you know this, um, we both quit Woolworths, two weeks notice. Yeah. I was starting on Monday, March the 7th. On Friday, March the 5th, I was involved in a head-on car accident. Oh no. <laughs> Tracy, the, the theory was that I was gonna drive the trucks and Tracy was gonna do the merchandising and put the bread on the shelves and things yeah. like that. Now, when we took on the business, it was already established to a point and it had two members of staff in it. We then had to get Tracy in the driver's seat. I couldn't drive, so I had my feet up in the truck as an instructor while she learned to drive the truck after a day. <laughs> you only have to have an L plate on the truck, so she was yeah. capable of stepping in, but she had to actually have an L plate on and drive the truck on the first day of the business. Wow. Yeah, that was scary. And at that point, it's, you just gotta make it work, isn't it? And we did, yeah. and we did. And it was, it, Tracy got a license really quickly. I wasn't allowed to get my truck back anymore. She carried on driving and I carried on doing <laughs> the other job. So we basically swapped jobs. Yeah. It was, she loved driving trucks and we had a new truck. Um, the trucks that we got were both automatics um, and they were beautiful trucks. Mm. Um, we leased them from Hertz and they did a fantastic job of making sure the trucks and everything were running right. So yeah. you don't have that worry. One of the things that we were uh, made sure of when we took that business on that if it failed, we can say, I don't need this truck, have a nice day and give it back and not be stuck with, uh, I've got two trucks, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. And so we leased, it's a write off on the tax anyway. You lived with it. But yeah, 
it's, it was a scary, scary start to the business. Mm. But, mm. So, so, so bringing on from the first step, mm. so I, 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 you're saying, you know, one thing you want to identify is you want to bring value to the company, mm. or whatever you're going to do has got to bring value to people, right? Yeah. So fish and chips, people need to eat, there's some value, but at the same time, you don't want to buy a business that's not going to be around next year. So you're obviously then going, well, what can I do with this to grow it, to keep it there? So what's, what's your, not a secret to success in that respect, but like, what, what have you done to go, okay, well, in here in the fish chips, what have you done to go, right, this is... Gluten free, as we mentioned, biggest part of the menu that's brought a lot of people in. Um, so it was, it's an area of the market that's growing um, for various and sundry reasons. But um, a lot more people are choosing to be that way and there's a lot more people have to be that way. Mm. Um, and we treat them all the same. If you choose to be gluten free, you're going to get gluten free here. End of story. Yeah. Um, I think that was one of the things that uh, we saw as a, a, as a market. Getting rid of the Euros meats that were here and starting to make our own and word spreading that was homemade, big bonus. Same with the hamburgers, big bonus. Um, we started advertising on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Um, putting our menu on Facebook, um, increasing the gluten free range, and the people that are gluten free started spreading the word. Yeah. And it's one of those things that a family of five or six, and we've got uh, for the last two years, not this year coming, obviously. For the last two Christmases prior, we have a group from Melbourne. There's one child in that family of six that is gluten-free. Hmm. And he's a serious celiac. He can't actually go anywhere near a piece of fish that's normal. Wow. He has to have his own chips and his own fish wrapped up separately over in the corner. He can't share the chips because if somebody's had a piece of fish, normal fish, and then touched the chip, he can't. He's that bad. Wow. And, and it's unfortunate for him. But they eat ate here every day because I knew he was safe. Yeah. I fed one celiac and I got a family of six. And because we can do that and segregate the food for them, um, and we stamp the gluten-free food, as you saw at lunch, mm. we stamp the gluten-free food so that people are aware of it, that's going to grow in the business because a whole family can come here, the celiac can get what they need, and everybody else can have nice fish and chips. I mean, this celiac food's lovely. Tracy eats it all the time. And I'm of the point where we tried a gluten-free hamburger. I'll eat it. If I don't like it, it's like, well, that's not going out. Mm. And we tried several different recipes for bread before we found one that was like, hey, that's not bad. Mm. And then we started selling that one because it tastes very similar to normal. Yep. And that's what we're aiming at. So it tastes similar to every other person's food, mm. but it's gluten-free. Yeah. Those are the, a few of the things that... Um, Facebook makes a big difference. I was about to ask about Facebook actually. Like, is is, is it mostly organic um, advertising that you're getting from there, or do, do you put do you put, people push ads out on it as well, or we let people know what we're doing, and we've got lots of followers. We won't have, we don't have comments. We don't let people put comments, good or bad. We don't let people put comments on there, um, and that side of any industry now is so easily cheated you know the other fish and chip shop might go oh, their shit's and chips are bad yeah that type of thing so we don't have any type of comments whether they're good or bad um but all as we do is let people know what's happening so we've got our ice cream fridge now now the ice cream shop around the corner um decided to close close their business and there was no ice creams available so we just put a little fridge south australian ice cream south australian made easy yeah so it was just, and we, so we put that bit of advertising on, but that shared our page and then people looked at our menu. Um, our menu's online as well on our Facebook page so people can go and look at that. And yeah. um, we did try doing online ordering through the first lockdown of COVID, but because every other small restaurant was trying to do exactly that, yeah. the app was terrible. Yeah. It just started failing, we were missing, so we just went nuts. And in the end, um, we talked to a lot of our customers and they were very happy to phone orders. And two, through that first COVID break, they wanted a 10 minute out of house. Yeah. Um, I'm leaving the house for 10 minutes, I'm picking up fish and chips, 
came down, walked in, grabbed the chips, walked out, gone. Yeah. And um, at that first break, we were the only one left open. Wow. Um, Nino's was doing home deliveries. The other fish shop and chip shop had shut. The pubs were shut. We were the only thing left yeah. open. So we got a reasonable amount of uh, business still, enough to keep us going. It was about normal. We didn't get a big increase, but it was about what our normal business would be through that time. Wow. So we stayed normal, which is good. Which is good. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you can't ask for better than that, really. Well, no. You can. Oh, I can ask for a 20% increase, but no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it stayed about the same, which is where we're anticipating it. But we've slowly grown the business. We're probably, you know, anything between 20 and 30% up on a regular basis, um, which is good. Whether we can put it down to us being a good fish and chip shop or that the area is growing. And um, I read a report only last night that the area is growing. It's one of the fastest growing rural areas in South Australia. Yeah, right. And they're actually upgrading the road, thank God. Victor Harbour Road's getting more overtaken lanes, etc. Good. About time. About time. Because it's okay coming down here as long as you don't get stuck behind someone, isn't it? It's, it's uh, that, stuck behind tourists, people that don't know the road. Yeah. Um, you know, the roads, I can drive that road at 100 kilometres an hour in my van, and I do on a regular basis because mm. I used to truck drive, um, without a problem. But people don't know the road, they slow down for corners, and it just, it becomes frustrating because there's no overtaking lanes, accidents. And it is one of the most dangerous roads in South Australia. Yeah. It does need fixing. It does need addressing, doesn't it? It's it's getting fixed. Thank God. Yeah. Well, uh, I I guess, but just before we finish off, uh, my question is, have you got anything you want to add? Is there anything, any advice that you would want to give to anybody that's maybe sort of going, let's start a business or I want to do something or have got a business and want to make it better? I mean, what's... Talk to people. And not just people. You need to talk, one, to your customers, see what they need. Um, you know, we've got customers that will come in, celiacs generally, saying, oh, can I get that gluten-free? No, but I'll look into it for you. Yep. And I've done that for a few people, and now they're getting it. So yep. it, it's not really that hard. Um, at one time, tomato sauce. It's tomato sauce. You wouldn't think it'd need to have gluten-free written on it. But it does, because it's, some of them are produced in a factory that also produces gluten products. Gotcha. So traces, and that's all it takes sometimes. So we've found gluten-free tomato sauces, tartare sauces, um, just different things that we can now say, well, that's gluten-free. And chicken salt. Yeah. <laughs> There's chicken salts on the market that aren't gluten-free. Yeah, right. So we've got chicken salt that's gluten-free. Wow. Yeah. I, 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 I'd, I'd never... Would you wouldn't thought have thought of, of it. No. And, and that's the little things you've got to think about from that aspect to give to the customers. So we can say, that's it. And do you find that if you've talked to someone, someone said, oh, it'd be really nice if X, do you find that that's something then that a lot of other people go, oh, that's good? Yeah, it's it just simple ideas. Like customers will come in and ask for different things as well. Um, one of our most famous, not famous, uh, most popular burgers um, is, from a seafood point of view, is calamari burger. And I stole that from Queensland. <laughs> I, was there, I went up to Queensland on holiday many years ago before we had the fish and chip shop and it was the calamari burger and I tried it and I thought, that's awesome. Mm. It's on the menu. <laughs> Thank you, Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Unfortunately, the fish and chip shop that sold me that is now burnt down. Oh, no. I oh, know. I actually went to Queensland and stayed near that fish and chip shop so I could go there for tea and it burnt down. As long as it doesn't follow, we'll be fine. <laughs> no. Um, no. The, um, the, the other advice would be to talk to other business owners in the area and make sure that um, you know your business is going to be not stepping on toes. Like, I'm not really close to any other fish and chip shop. I wouldn't want to be right next door to one. Yeah. Because then it's a competition and you don't need that. Yeah. You know, don't build next to something exactly the same as you. Don't do that. Um, have a look at where you're building, the, putting the place, you know. Um, I'm bottom of the main street in Victor Harbour. Ideally, I'd like a main street location, but we still get a lot of people around yeah. and a lot of people come past. So it's a good location. It's, again, location, location, location. <laughs> it's one of those things. And it's just talking, yeah. really. 
talking to people is the, the best advice you can get. Talking to other business owners, how they did things. Banks are very helpful. Mm. Um, do, do you find that people are quite open? Like if you go, hey, look, I want to ask you about, you know, how, how another fish and chip shop would go. Or, well, this was already here, wasn't it? So yeah. you know, did you go around and sort of say, well, you know, are you happy with the next door? Or, you know, how do, how do those conversations we, um, go? We came in eight here, basically. We came in eight here for a few days and just listened. Yeah. Talked to the staff. I'm a talky person, so yak to the people behind the counter and ask them how things were going. Um, saw how they were working. Good team that were here. Um, most of them, we've still got one of the girls from before. Um, two of the others have moved on to full-time jobs. Good on them. If you can get a full-time job, take it. Mm. Um, you know, 20 with Tracy and I working here is 15, 20 hours for different people. Um, don't underestimate juniors. I've got one young lad here, um, not our lad, but one young lad here. He's um, brilliant, 15. He, I'd leave him running the place. Mm. But don't underestimate juniors in your workforce. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's about it, really, from a, that, that type of thing. It's just having a go. Yeah. You've got to have a go. Brilliant. Well, Chris, thank you very much. No problem. For your time. I really appreciate it. You enjoyed your lunch as well? Oh, mate, it was brilliant. As always. <laughs> it was cracking. Can, Can we, we get the jam ball donut on? No, Should I mention I, that? I didn't have a jam ball donut. <laughs> oh, dear. It's good, to, good job my wife won't watch this. Um, She's out were. there, she heard. Oh, she is too. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I'm done for. Um, uh, now, we are at Victor Harbour. Yep. Uh, what's the name of the road? We are at 21 Albert Place, Victor Harbour. Come down here, have some fish and chips. They're awesome. You can't stay inside at the moment. Unfortunately. Unless, yeah, unless you can, in which case the restrictions have lifted. In which case you can come in, you can have meat, you can eat here or you can eat on the beach. And what's your best recommendation? I love the fish and chips. I'm an old school. The fish, but... Butter fish and chips is the best. It's good price, good value, and a good feed. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Not a problem. Enjoy the day. I will. <laughs>